Hi guys, Ian Johnson from DriverSuccess.com. Today we're going to talk about calculating a safety stock. And in this case, we're talking about determining a minimum inventory count in order to protect your company against the high cost of an inventory stockout. And when you measure the cost of an inventory stockout, you're talking about lost sales, lost gross profit, lost customers, and lost market share. Okay? So a safety stock is most often associated with min-max. However, it also applies to JIT, which is why I put it in parentheses. Because even in just-in-time supply chains, you need a little bit of just-in-case inventory. Okay? So I'm going to go over these four steps in terms of defining uh, your punishment time, the daily consumption in terms of your sales to your customers, safety stock, and your actual delivery to your customers once you generate a sale. Okay? Um, but before we get started on these four points, I just wanted to say that there are a lot of calculations out there. There, there are a lot of very complex calculations that account for all kinds of different variables multiple vendors, uh, failure rates, all kinds of different things. And we're accounting for some of that in this four-step process, but I'm trying to simplify it as much as possible because, to be quite honest with you, it is a relatively simple process, and it comes from trial and error. The more you analyze it, the more accurate your safety stock level is going to be. Okay? So let's talk about replenishment time. You'll notice I didn't put delivery time here because your vendor's delivery time to your location is only one portion of your replenishment time. In this case, we're talking about the time it takes to generate a purchase requisition, to get it approved, to email it out to your vendor, the delivery time from your vendor, the incoming inspection time, and the time it takes to put it on the shelf. Okay, So it's not just delivery time. So in this case, um, the company has determined that its replenishment time should take six days. But of course, they're going to track the actual uh, number of days in terms of replenishment time. So we've got five shipments here. Six, 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 and six are the expected replenishment time in terms of days, and the actual are 11 days, 9 days, 11 days, 5 days, and 4 days. The variance is plus 5, plus 3, plus 5, minus 1, and minus 2. So the last two shipments were early. Okay? So in this case, we want to determine what the replenishment time is, and we want to account for the variances. So in this case, we're going to add up the variances. 5 plus 3 is 8, plus 5 is 13, minus 3 is 10, divided by the number in the sample portion, which is 5, gives us 2. So we're going to add 2 to our expected replenishment time. And again, the more, the more uh, shipments you analyze and the more often you do this analysis, the more accurate your variance is going to be. Okay? So in this case, we're coming up with a replenishment time of eight days. Now this number means we must cover enough inventory to support the company's sales for eight days. And that leads us to the second step, daily consumption. This pertains to the daily sales that you make on average of this particular product. Okay? So what I've done here is I've accounted for four weeks. Week one, two, three, and four, sales volumes are 500 units, 600, 700, and 750. So for the month, we've got 2,550, and we don't divide it by 30 days, we divide it by the number of buying days. In this case, we assume five buying days a week, Monday to Friday, so we do 2,550 divided by 5, 10, 15, 20, 20 days gives us 127 units per day in terms of an average sales volume. So again, make sure you account for buying days, not days in the month, okay, because it'll skew your number. Now we're going to move over to safety stock. So we need to cover eight days at 127 units for each day. Very simply, it's eight days times 127 units. Our safety stock is 1,060. Now, a lot of companies just stop right here, okay, a lot of companies just say that's the that's our safety stock, that's our reorder point, we don't want it to go below there, and if it does, we're going to order right away. However, I've added a fourth step, and this fourth step accounts for your delivery, okay, in terms of your company's delivery. And this basically allows you to kind of reduce your cost of financing, okay. My, my, my uh, opinion is, is that if you've got a product with a high inventory turnover rate, that, you know, you're always selling it, then you should stop right here, okay. That's, that's just my opinion. It allows you to account for unforeseen spikes in demand. However, you can use your delivery date or your delivery time to your advantage. And to give you an example, let's say, let's say that you know that it takes you two days to deliver product to your customer. You're not going to tell them two days. You're going to tell them four days. You're going to say it's going to take us a maximum of four days. You're going to buy two days, which allows you to discount your safety stock. Okay? So in this case, instead of covering... 100% of 1,016, you're going to cover 75%, which is 762 units, 
which equates to six days. Okay? The 1016 is eight days. So if you want a basic, if you have flexibility in your, in your delivery times to your customers, you can use it to your advantage. If you know it's, if you, if you're guaranteed that you deliver it within two days, tell your customer a little bit more, four days. It allows you to basically save a little bit on inventory um, by not having to cover the full amount. Because in this case, you're basically covering yourself for two days. So even if you, you, you only have to cover for six instead of eight, so you've got two days to play with, okay? So that's, that's essentially the entire process. Define your replenishment time. Account for the daily consumption in terms of sales per day on average. Determine your safety stock, and if you have flexibility with your delivery times to your customers, use that to your advantage and discount the amount that you have to carry in your inventory, which would help you reduce your financing. So that's it. Safety stock. Um, make sure that you protect your company against the high cost of an inventory stock. So that's it. Ian Johnson, DriverSuccess.com. Bye-bye.